um so what happened was I, I had gone over to FCW, I think either once or twice, and DeMott was the head coach over there, you know, and it was still, I, you know, I live just, just outside of Orlando. So it's, it was about, a, about an hour away from here. And I went over there and uh, there was a little bit of talk about possibly moving to Orlando at the time, um, but I had just gone through, um, I may have been going through fire school to become a firefighter at the time. Uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. It didn't turn out so well, but um, I, I, you know, I just needed four thousand dollars, so something to spend four thousand dollars on that I was never going to get a return on. So I'll go to fire school, <laughs> any EMT, any EMT school. Um, so I uh, I did that, and and you know, there were kind of some. I felt like they were feeling me out about a coaching job at that time, and I just really, I really didn't like. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done. I was kind of done, and I just like. Uh, um, it was what it was and i kind of wanted to do the fire thing and, and get out of the get out of the mafia you know what i mean and, and, and move on and do something else and and then a short while later they ended up moving to orlando um you know like i said that's where i live and and demont was there i went in maybe once or twice as a guest coach um with, while demont was there and then he left and matt bloom who i'd been tight with for you know many years uh he came in as the head coach and then I, I uh, you know, well, I went in a couple more times while he was there as a head coach, and and then they, you know, asked me if I'd be interested in a full time job, you know. And at this time, I was past the firefighter thing. I was doing a little bit of real estate, and and uh, I was like, well, it's kind of a no brainer, just to at least give it a try, you know, give it a try. If I don't like it, I have to do it, you know. So, so I went in, and uh, I. I Dude, I, I fell in love with the job. And I like like I said, I was never trained, so I never went through a school. So it was very intimidating for me to go in and actually, okay, now I have to coach this and teach them how to do this. I know how to do it, but how do I teach it? You know, and and uh I don't know if you know this, but I'm not, you know, the best technical wrestler on the planet. So <laughs> it's not really my thing. So, you know, I thought that's what they teach in the wrestling schools, and I can't do that, you know, and and it's like, that's not what we want you for we need you for the in-between stuff and the psychology and the character stuff and it's like okay i can do that you know and and then i think the, the biggest thing you just kind of fall in love with is is uh, the relationships that you create with these you know young people i don't want to call them kids you know some of them are early 20s but they kind of feel like kids and they kind of start to feel like your own kids when you start to create that relationship and you you know you see them come in the door for the first time and and then, you know, you, you're teaching them, you know, how to throw a punch and then you're, you're gaining their confidence and, you, and, and they start to trust you and you see their confidence start to go up and it, it creates this relationship with them. And then you see them, you know, go, go and get better and, you know, they, they leave, they would leave the PC and go to Raw Smackdown and next thing you know, you're turning on the TV and, you know, they're on WrestleMania. So it was, it turned out to be a really, really cool job for me. And I, I really liked it. Thoughts on Bill DeMott? Dude, Bill was in the, one of the most special um, things that ever happened to me in my career. Like, Bill was always good to me. Um, and he, uh, we had a tag in Portland, Maine, which is where I grew up. And it was me and Albert against Hurricane and Bill DeMott. This must have been right around the invasion time because, you know, those guys were together. And, uh, and, you know, we have the match, just a regular match, but it's in my home, to, you know, it's my hometown, my family, all of my family, probably like 20, 30 people in my, or my fat friends and family in the front row. And, and this is the building that I grew up going to WWF shows, you know, as a kid, like it was the only building that we had wrestling in, you know, that and the, the, ex, the, the Portland Expo building had some ICW stuff, but this is the building that the WWF would go to, you know, so I literally like as a kid would go to this building to see wrestling and so to be there to always work that building was always fun but then you know to have this match there and it was just a fun match and then at the end um i think it was apa and maybe val venus may have came out but came out they didn't tell me they were going to do it they came out at the end and we all danced together and brought my sister in the ring and my daughter in the ring and so it was really cool you know so um, yeah, dude, Bill was always, always great to me. Always, always great to me. I did, uh, when I was doing WCW TV, I had a raggedy old pair of boots and Bill came up to me one time and said, what size are you? I said, 12. He goes, are you going to be at this TV? I'm like, yep. 
He gave me a brand new pair of black leather boots. Didn't ask for anything in return. You know, it's like when someone does something nice for you and there's a camera there, it's like, all yeah. right, well, you know, yeah, Bill yeah. Just, did, just to be a nice guy. Bill was, I, I love Bill DeMont. Yeah, he's, he actually told me that story. He said you never paid him for the boots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Tell me about the Performance Center during the pandemic. I mean, it was a crazy time, man, as it was for the rest of the world, I think. You know, there was so much uh, uh, uncertainty, what was going on, where, where, where was everything going to go? Was everything just going to shut down one day? You know, like we did, nobody really knew. Um, and then, you know, you have to get tested. At one point, I think we had to get tested every day. And then it turned to maybe twice a week and then once a week. And then it finally all went away. But, you know, then you have to have masks on while you're in the ring if you're a coach. And then if you're, if you're talent, you could take your mask off. To, to, but you had to work with the same guy all week um, until the next test. So it was just, you know, those two guys working with each other. And then if you're outside the ring, as soon as you had to get out, even if you're a wrestler, you had to put a mask on. And it was just so, you know, like everything else, dude, it was uncertainty and just a crazy time. And I, and I say like anybody who went through that time, as far as talent that were on like raw or SmackDown, especially with no audience, and you're out there trying to entertain uh, audience at home with no, no yeah. immediate reaction, you know, in the building. It's just like hats off to them, man. Like they, that's the hardest time that I think the wrestling uh, business has ever gone through. You know, we have to perform for nobody on a week after week basis. And then you have to go, that's, that's your judge. Are you getting over? Do they like me? Do they, do they hate me? Like that's your judge is that audience, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it was always Vince McMahon, but that audience played into it too, because that audience could sway his judgment, right? Because, you know, he might not get it, but he's seeing like this person, you know, going out there, they're getting an insane reaction. Okay. I'm going to do something with this person and I'm going to market them. Right. At that time, it was just, you're basically working for the one guy and you're getting his opinion uh, without an audience. And it's just, what a hard time, you know? Why'd you stop working at the performance center? Um, it was just really, uh, I started to get the feelings that I had in 2007 that I told you about when I was like, okay, there's really nothing for me here. And I felt like, you know, my days could be numbered and there were a lot of releases happening. Um, and then on the other hand, I saw like kind of cool stuff going on outside on the independence. And I saw like Cardona out there just killing it and, and, and having fun. And, you know, I knew I was getting older. Um, I, you know, I just, I just turned 49 and I'm like, man, if I'm going to do this now, like, like I, can, I feel like I could go out there and I could make some money. And, you know, I'd send out some feelers, friends doing independence going, Hey, what do you think I could make? And do you think I would do well? And, you know, who's out there working right now and like figuring out, trying to figure out what the competition was for, for guys like me. And it just felt like the right thing to do. I missed, I missed, um, I missed performing. Of course. I think you always miss performing. Um, but I also missed the travel, you know, and I missed going, you know, to the UK and going to Japan and going to these places that I otherwise probably wouldn't get to go to. Um, and there was just none of that anymore, you know, especially, you know, now NXT just started doing their, what they call their coconut shows, which are the local Florida shows, but they're still not touring, you know, other than I think they did a, a takeover um, SummerSlam weekend, but, you know, it's just not that I love that being on the road and, 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 you know, I, just, I love that. And it's, it's kind of, you know, I've been doing it for so long now, I think it's become part of me. And I, and uh, like I said, it was a great, it was a great job for a long time. And, you know, uh, the, the whole the leadership and the management started to change a little bit, you know, when Hunter went, Hunter went away, um, when he had his heart thing and, and then everything just started to, 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 to change. And at one point, uh, the performance center and NXT was just this really special, cool thing. Um, like something I'd never been a part of, um, in the wrestling business. And it's, uh, it was just very pure and very, uh, it was a pride there that was real and, and it was a cool place to be a part of, you know, and at one point it was like the coolest brand in wrestling, you know, and, and we we're just killing it every pay-per-view with every takeover, just going out there, we'd steal the weekend, you know, and be like, okay, we'll do a takeover, a two hour and 20 minute takeover on Saturday night, WrestleMania is the next day. And you walk out and you just go, okay, follow that mother. You know what I mean? Like, like we're, we're killing it. And yeah. the Garganos and Coles and, and Champas and, 
you know, to, um, revival at the time, all these guys just going out there and just stealing the show and, and you know, sanity. It's just the list goes on and on. And then the women just the same thing, just going out there and just, you know, five matches, two hour, 20 minute show. Um, you get this today, but you get eight hours WrestleMania tomorrow, <laughs> you know, like, like, so we would just go out there and just, it was, it was, just, you know, I always say like that, we are NXT, you know, the hashtag we are NXT or the, the catchphrase, we are NXT or the marketing, whatever you want to call it. That wasn't just marketing. That was like a real thing. It was felt by everybody in the back, and, you know, and I say like, don't get me wrong. It was still the wrestling business, but it was the purest and, uh, and just the, the, just the pride that, that went along with the whole thing was, was a very cool thing to be a part of. 